what about the rest of Creative Cloud? What other desktop applications can become systems? Well, today, we are proud to give you a preview of the next step in our evolution, Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. So this, this, this really is graphic design reimagined. You get all the precision and versatility of Illustrator, but designed for touch. You'll be able to open projects on the iPad and then finish on Illustrator on the desktop, and you'll have everything you need to build your project, share it with collaborators, and get quickly to a finished logo, graphic, or illustration. Reengineering Illustrator for the iPad gave us a chance to also question our assumptions and really rethink the status quo. And I think you're going to see an Illustrator that's not just mobile, but a lot more intuitive and easier to use. And to show you Illustrator on the iPad for the first time ever, please welcome Eric Snowden and Dipanjana Chakravarti. Great, thanks, Scott. So we're really excited to be here to show you Illustrator for the very first time. In similar to Photoshop and Adobe Fresco, Illustrator is part of a broader system. And using cloud documents, I can see everything that's been created on the desktop or the iPad all in the same place. And I'm going to open up this pretty complex drawing here on my iPad. And this is really important because the team is focused on performance as a first-class citizen in this app. So it moves really fast. It's super smooth. And this drawing has tens of thousands of objects in it, but the iPad and Illustrator can handle it with ease. I'm going to go ahead and open up a second file, and I'm going to create a few different logos using a few different techniques. So the first thing I want to show here is the new Rethought Pencil Tool. So the Pencil Tool in Illustrator and the Apple Pencil are an amazing pairing together. So I can start by drawing by just tapping on my screen, and I'm creating a few straight lines, which is pretty straightforward. When I get to the end of a line, I can tap and drag and create really smooth vector curves using natural fluid motion. And so for those of you who have maybe been a little bit intimidated by Illustrator in the past, it's incredibly easy to create vectors right here on the iPad. Now, for those of you who are comfortable with the pen tool and have used it quite a bit, we've also rethought how that works for touch devices and the Apple Pencil. So I'm going to start by creating a basic shape here, doing tracing, something I do uh, quite a bit here in Illustrator. And you'll notice if I click and drag, I start to get um, exact percentages. I get a ton of detail. I'm going to start dragging and just creating the rest of this very quickly. And I'm getting good snapping. And so I've made a few mistakes here I want to edit. I want to get rid of this extra anchor point. All I do is click the delete button. The anchor point goes away. I've actually made an extra point here that I want to get rid of. And now we have smart delete for Illustrator on the iPad. And so when I delete that point, it doesn't actually change my vector curve. So it's really great being able to selectively edit um, individual vectors. If I want to move a point along a path, in the past it would really push and pull the shape, but I can actually drag this point um, along an exact path and move it exactly where I want without transforming the shape. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and I've also got the ability to change things by exact pixel increments. So if I scrub here on my X and Y, I can get very, very precise, and that's really important when using Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up by drawing a little eye here. Um, and now I want to tweak the type. I'm really not happy with this typography. And so if I select this piece of text and I go into my, um, my properties here, I can actually change the size. I can change spacing, everything right here on screen without digging through a lot of complicated menus. But if I do go into my properties panel, it's really easy to try out different fonts on the screen. I can click and drag and actually preview different fonts instantly on the screen in my design to see how things look. And if I decide none of these are quite the right font, I can tap, and I'll get access to all 17,000 Adobe fonts right here within Illustrator. I can pick one I like and finish up my design. So the last thing I want to show here, um, again, is a really common workflow where you draw something on a piece of paper, you take a photo, you bring it into Illustrator, and you trace it all over again. And we think there's a much better way using Sensei. So if I select this image, and I go into my drawing guide. Sensei is going to analyze this image, find all the underlying shapes, and create an amazing trace for me right here on the iPad. And you'll notice, if I go in to edit this, 
I have very few points, but I have total control. So if I decide I want to change something that Sensei did, it helps me get started, but it doesn't take any of the control away from me. Now, that was a pretty simple example. What if I have a drawing that looks like this? It's on a rough background. There's a stain. It's actually not drawn very precisely. Sensei can still handle this image. And again, it's looking at all the underlying shapes and reconstructing all the vectors here for me and creates an amazing tracing of this. And because I have control, I can go into this image and I can actually edit the underlying construction shapes that will then change the entire vector. So if I end up changing the outside or these individual things, I get a ton of control, including all the points that I want. So just new ways of creating vectors right here on the iPad. So those are a few of the basic drawing and typography controls. I'm going to pass it off to Dipanchana to show some of the more expressive capabilities we're bringing to the iPad. Thanks, Eric. So let's take a look at some of these expressive capabilities. I'm going to talk about the first feature, symmetry. I've got this drawing right here, and it is fairly symmetric as the left and the right side are absolutely identical. And as is the problem with such drawings, the minute I edit one side, those edits don't get carried on to the other and have to repeat that process all over again. But with Illustrator on the iPad, we can simply use the symmetry mode. So I will go and delete this one half that I had initially flipped. And with the other half selected, I go right here and say symmetry. And you can see that it has mirrored and reflected one side for me. I will go in and edit some details now. I start by editing this path right here. And I move around this circle as well. All right, to finish up, I just draw the antenna on one side. OK. Now to exit, I simply tap out. And now when I tap back in, it behaves like an ordinary object, which means that I can apply any transformations. And if I want to edit this a little bit further, all I have to do is just go right in and it's always connected and always editable. So that was the symmetry mode. Let's move on to more new things. The next feature is called radial repeat. I have this form here, and I want to rotate and repeat it in a circle. How I do it today is I duplicate and I rotate. And in the process, I've done some fairly complex bit of mathematics to figure out the angles that I need and the instances that I want. And I feed them manually in a dialog box. That sounds like a lot of work, right? <laughs> we can make this insane process much simpler by using radial repeat. So with my form selected, I go right here and say radial repeat. And you can see that it has rotated these instances for me. I can now change the radius. I can increase or decrease the number of instances. And I just went up to 100 and back in a quick motion. And I can also swivel it around for more formations. Just like symmetry, I tap out to exit. And when I tap back in, I can continue to edit this. So that was radial repeat. Let's move on to the last piece. I have this leaf here, and I want to cover this entire background with a leaf-like pattern. And just like before, I can start by duplicating. But you know what? I don't even want to attempt it, because with the new feature pattern repeat, this is going to take seconds. So with my leaf selected right here, I go and say pattern repeat. And there you go. It started me off with a basic grid-like pattern. I can now place it anywhere I want, increase the bounds to cover a larger area much quickly. I can play with these on-canvas widgets to adjust the spacing. And it's starting to come together, but it looks a little bland, right? So I will go into the Properties panel to add a little flavor to this. I'll start by changing the grid type to a drop type of grid right here. All right, I tweak it further. I go on Columns and do a flip Y. Do the same to the rows. All right, 
Now, I want to add a little more detail that I hadn't quite done in the beginning. So just like before, I enter the isolated instance. And something to note now is that I had created this leaf in the symmetry mode. So all I'm doing is just drawing on one side, and it draws on the other. And it's drawing on the entire pattern as well instantaneously. Now, I will finish up by drawing a little more detail. Oops. Little more detail right here. And there you go. So that was pattern repeat to create complex patterns in a matter of minutes. And Illustrator on the iPad is a complete system with Illustrator on the desktop, which, which means that you can move from one to another seamlessly. And this was just a few of the features for Illustrator on the iPad today. We can't wait to see what you guys make with it. Thank you. So thank you, Dipanjana and Eric. So we are looking forward to bringing Illustrator to the iPad in 2020. Uh, and we're all really excited about it.